Uh, this, for those the three devotees that are here for the first time, this is uh, Shiva Prabhupada's. Uh, can you can you hear him? So, uh, this is Prabhupada's Shiva Prabhupada. Uh, actually, it's a uh, the devotee made a movie of Shiva Prabhupada's life story. Uh, and uh, this is on a memory stick, high definition, so you'll get a glimpse of Srila Prabhupada's life uh, through that movie. Uh, it's called the Hare Krishna Mantra, uh, or the movement, the Hare Krishna Mantra, and the Swami that uh, made it all happen. So, a uh, very wonderful uh, movie, and we'll give that to you uh, after we get to our camera. So, we're going to chant uh, this wonderful song. And the topic for today is the power of association. Now we're going to talk a little about online association and offline association. Right now we're offline. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the last uh, maybe one and a half years, two years, we've been online. And uh, so we'll share a little about that in the power. And uh, I guess, okay, the question is there. But maybe I'll just ask, how many of you are excited to be here together with the devotees? <laughs> so, uh, you are excited, that's wonderful, but guess also who's excited? Yes, I think I'm going to hurry and keep. Yeah. I'm going to You're also excited. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we also want to show them how excited we are. Okay? So if you're not chanting loudly, or you're not, you know, you're not involved in the kirtan, then they're going to think, nah, <laughs> I don't think they're excited. Right? And the more enthusiasm you put into the kirtan, you know, clapping, loudly chanting, uh, you will inspire the devotees around you. And the more you inspire the devotees around you, Krishna becomes pleased. And Krishna will inspire you. Okay? And in that way, we will experience what I'm going to speak about. Mm -hmm. That which you can get offline, but not online. Okay? So let's see if we can serve each other by chanting nicely, chanting loudly, uh, meditating uh, on uh, the mercy of the Lord, and in this way invoke His compassion.
So welcome again. Uh, the topic is the power of association. And we already asked this question, uh, how many devotees, uh, how many of you have missed a devotee association? And no doubt, <coughs> uh, everyone, those who are serious about spiritual life, uh, they would uh, definitely miss association. And we're going to be covering why. Why is it uh, that you miss association and why is it so important? So, uh, why this topic of the power of association? We find so uh, due to the circumstance, due to uh, Mr. Corona. Mr. Corona has also been very Corona, very merciful, because due to his mercy, they say if you don't, if you lose something, then it's the only time you appreciate that which you lose. So, uh, due to the environment and the circumstance, and many good things. Uh, have come out and come out and many good things will come out. So due to that circle situation, naturally uh, there was social distance, distance you know, etc. And everyone practically went online. Everybody went on Zoom. And I'm sure how many of you have had the opportunity to listen to more classes during the lockdown period than ever before? In fact, now you have more opportunity to hear devotees across the globe. And some, sometimes you don't know which one to listen to because it's like running parallel and uh, a few times a day. So uh, naturally, a more association online has been there uh, due to the circumstance. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, that opportunity has been there. But there's something, and on, online, Naturally, the sound is there, you're hearing. You may see the devotees uh, through um, Zoom, and you hear, you're hearing them. But there's something that you cannot transmit online. And the scientists have not mastered that technology yet. Sound can go through, but you cannot uh, experience the feelings. So the taste of association is totally different from on, being online. Mm -hmm. You can hear the voice or the sound vibration with the devotees' hearts that you cannot feel online. That you feel when we come together. And that's the difference. Mm -hmm. As we as I explained, mm -hmm. that when we inspire each other, mm -hmm. that energy that's created in the environment that energy you cannot pick up online. That energy you can only feel when you come together. Right? Naturally, because we're social beings, when we come together, it's always wonderful. Right? And to see devotees is always wonderful. So that's generally there. But uh, when we come together, when we congregate and we glorify the Lord, that's special. When we come together and we pray, to the Lord, collectively, that experience is what is missing online. So the power of association and devotional service. Shri Prabhupada in a letter, 19 uh, April 1975, Vandavan says, <clears throat> by associating and rendering service to the Vaishnavas and hearing the philosophy of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, as well as chanting Hare Krishna, your life will become perfect. So this is Srila Prabhupada's summary statement of how we can perfect our lives. And he starts off by associating and rendering service to the Vaishnavas. When we come together, we may be thinking, I'm coming together 
uh, so that I can uh, pray to the Lord with the devotees. But we should also understand that when we come together, we have an opportunity to serve each other. And we can serve each other by our consciousness, by our mood, attentive mood of prayer. The more we are praying to the Lord, then our energy uh, spills over to the devotees. And they become inspired. Prabhupada gave the example of uh, Charlie Chaplin. So Charlie Chaplin went uh, for a, a ballroom dancing competition. And <clears throat> now they, you know, all the dancers, uh, partners were all sitting. And there were a few people in the audience that wanted to play a trick on Charlie Chaplin. So what they did was, uh, they put glue on his seat. And, you know, during those days they would wear like a coat, a black coat, uh, which had a slit in, on the side here. You know, like something like our, our dirties are. So he sat, right, and then uh, the, 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 all the other, you know, couples went and they started dancing. And he thought, okay, time for him to go. So he got up. And because his coat was stuck to the chair, when he got up, it got ripped. So he didn't notice, and with his ripped coat, and he goes onto the dance floor and starts to dance. And all the people that are watching, they begin to laugh. Now he's dancing, and they're laughing, and what is he thinking? Well, they might be dancing. Very nice. So he became more inspired. Uh, so he started dancing even more ecstatically. Right? And they started laughing even more. Mm -hmm. So he didn't know that they're laughing because his coat is torn. Mm -hmm. He thought that they're laughing because I danced so nicely. And everyone else that was there looking, that hold on, he's getting all the attention. So what they went, they went into the bathroom, uh, they tore their coats, uh, and they all came and they started dancing with all torn coats, uh, torn coats. So Prabhupada gave this uh, story to see, show you how uh, enthusiasm can spread, it's contagious. And when we come together uh, and we have the proper consciousness, we can serve and help other devotees in their own spiritual journey. So why does honey, there are different types of honey, it's one substance, but they have different colors and different tastes. Mm -hmm. So honey uh, can come in different colors and different tastes. <clears throat> and the reason is because bees, certain bees, will only go to specific flowers and extract the nectar from that flower. Mm -hmm. Some bees will only go to lotus flowers, and they won't go anywhere else. Other bees uh, will go to um, one particular flower and nowhere else. So the, this, the same type of bees would go to a specific farm, collect the honey from that specific flower, and therefore you get uh, different varieties of honey. So this variety of honey is compared to the different varieties of devotion that you can experience. And the devotion, the process of bhakti, or the power of devotion, and spiritual life is like uh, contained, like honey contained in a bottle. We can take that bottle and we can put some, use it for some material, uh, some material enjoyment, uh, which is dangerous, which means we have spiritual life but we don't take advantage of it. Or we may exploit the process of spiritual life. So we don't want to be in that situation. You may have spiritual life, you may know about it, but you may not be able to relish the honey. Because the honey is contained in the bottle. You have to open the lid. And spiritual life is all about practically trying to apply the process, which means we have to open the lid 
and then we can relish the honey. And opening the lid becomes easy in association with devotees. That's why the association is given so much emphasis in scripture. Because it becomes easy when you see others practicing and when you set the right example for others, you inspire them to open their bottle and then to relish that. Amen. So in the beginning we may hear about devotional service, but we want to practice so that we can taste it. And once we've tasted it, we can then share it. Amen. So let us go through scripture and hear what scripture got to say in relation to association. So in Srimad Bhagavatam 799, uh, Prahlad Maharaj says, Manya Dana Yoga Nara Danaya Hibavan Tiparasya Pumso Bhaktya Tutosha Bhagavan Gajayutapaya. Prahlad Maharaj continues. One may, one may possess wealth, an aristocratic family, beauty, austerity, education, sensory expertise, lustre, influence, physical strength, diligence, intelligence, and mystic yogic power. But I think that even by all these qualifications, one cannot satisfy the Supreme Personality of God. However, one can satisfy the Lord simply by devotional service. The gender did this. And thus, the Lord was satisfied with him. The gender was an elephant. So, Narad Muni, Prahlad Maharaj is making the point that you may have all these different expertise. You may be very skilled. You may be very wealthy, very beauty, very educated. But you cannot attract Krishna with these opulences because Krishna is the source of all these opulences. We may get attracted by somebody who's beautiful. We may get the attract, we may get the attention. But when you come to the Supreme Lord and you may be the most beautiful, in front of the Supreme Lord, this like the scripture described the most beautiful person in this universe on the earth planet. Scripture described when you compare her to the ugliest person in the heavenly planets, she looks like a frog. And when you take the heavenly damsels, you take the most beautiful heavenly damsels, and you compare her with the goddess of fortune, she looks like a frog. So no, none of these opulences can attract Krishna. Krishna is only attracted by devotional service, by loving sentiments to please him. So in the Vedic scriptures, there are many limbs of how to serve the Lord, how to uh, offer your loving devotion to the Lord. And Sri Rupa Goswami, uh, these wonderful personalities, have summarized, extracted the most essential limbs of bhakti, and they put that into a scripture called Bhakti Rasamrita And they've given 64 different limbs of bhakti that we can practice. And out of the 64, they've filter to say, okay, of, out of the 64, which five is the topmost? So then from the 64, they filtered to five of the most important limbs of bhakti. And these are the five limbs of bhakti. Uh, you can repeat. Sadhu Sangha, Nama Kirtana, Bhagavad Shravana, Matura Vasa, Sri Murtira, Shraddha Daya Sevana. So, 
Chaitan Chakram Vita shares, one should associate with the devotees, number one, chant the holy name of the Lord, hear Srimad Bhagavatam, reside at Mathura, the holy place, or Vrindavan, and worship the deity with faith and veneration. So these are the five most potent forms of devotional service. Lord Chet Mahaprabhu describes that even one of them, uh, if you apply one of them with faith, you can uh, achieve pure love of Krishna. They are extremely potent and powerful. Srila Prabhupada uh, has expertly taken these five and put them into the morning program. So at 4.30, uh, the devotees in the temple, uh, their program starts at 4.30. And at 4.30, uh, we perform all these five. We associate with the devotees, we chant the Hare Krishna mantra, uh, we have Shiva Bhagavatam class, uh, we are um, in Vrindavan or Tura, in the temple, which is by Kunta, um, and we worship the deity. Um, therefore, the morning program is very powerful for spiritual practice. So, uh, there are many limbs of bhakti. Chilurupa Goswami has uh, filtered them to 64, and then further filtered them to 5. Now, out of these five, he could have listed any one of them first. And he decides to list which first? Sadhu Sangha. Uh -huh. One should associate with the devotees. So therefore, uh, he's giving us a hint that of all the limbs of bhakti, topmost, number one, most important, is associating with The power of these five principles is very wonderful and difficult to understand. Even without faith in them, a person who is offenseless can awaken his dormant love of Krishna simply by being a little connected with them. Sadhu Sangha Krishna Bhaktiya Shraddha Yadi Haya Bhakti Pala Prema Haya Samsara Haya Shaya By associating with a devotee, one who awakens his faith in devotional service to Krishna. Because of devotional service, one's dormant love for Krishna awakens, and thus one's material conditioned existence comes to an end. This is why devotional why associating devotees is powerful. Because uh, by associating with devotees, our faith can be awakened in the process of loving devotional service. And because we are eternal servants of the Lord, because we are eternal servants of Krishna, we need that association uh, to inspire, to revive, uh, and to awaken uh, our Roman love. So now I'm going to, uh, so that was from a scriptural perspective. Mm -hmm. Now we'll share a little from a scientific perspective. Mm -hmm. From a scientific perspective, we know uh, that uh, you know, there is energy and uh, we can experience uh, sound, uh, we can even experience, uh, as we said, feelings of devotees. Mm -hmm. Our thoughts that we think, they're also forces. Mm -hmm. It's described uh, in the Yoga Sutras that when you think, just like you know, we have physical force, right? So I can push someone. You know? Let's say if I, you know, if I apply a force on this microphone, I can push this microphone. So that's a force. Mm -hmm. I'm applying some energy. Similarly, even thinking, uh, thoughts is a force. Mm -hmm. And it can have impact. So collective thinking also can have impact. So according to Ayurveda, Mm -hmm. There are three doshas, Bhagavata and Kapha, and each one is constituted of a uh, different combination of one of the five or two of the five elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. And your body is also constituted of these five elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. And I'm sure we all know that your body is predominantly water. In fact, approximately 72% of this body is made up of water. 
We drop percent earth, 6% space, 4% fire, approximately 6% air. So if your body is made up of 72% water, the scientists, and here are some of the, you know, the large amount of scientists every year they congregate and they discuss about one subject only. Well, these specific scientists, water. And they've been researching of what water, how you know the nature of water because water has amazing properties. Mm. They, are, they are finding that water has memory. Uh, water can transform, water can purify. Mm. Mm. Water has amazing properties. Now, in the from the Vedic system, we already knew that. Just like right, we have normal water. Okay, so we have normal water. Very mm. water. In there. <laughs> now, uh, you know, somebody said, oh, but I want Ganga water. I want the holy waters from the Ganga. So how am I going to, I'm here in Asia, I'm going to get Ganga water from all the way, go to India, how am I going to get Ganga water? So if you know a mantra, uh, you can invoke all the holy places. Or, if you don't want to memorize the full mantra, you just say Ganga, 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 and now I'm going to come your water. Mm -hmm. it's, it's explained, if you're taking a shower, you just have to say Ganga, 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 and now you're bathing in the holy river. Ganga. Now somebody will say, yeah. <laughs> but you'll be serious, right? You say Ganga, and now this water is Ganga. Mm -hmm. So these scientists, what they say, you, know, you tell them this and they say, this is serious. It's true. Because why? They've been experimenting and seeing that that's what happens. Just by sound vibration, the water transformed from normal water to holy water. And then they take this water and then uh, they uh, do different experiments and they see that it has an effect which is different from normal water. And they have instruments to measure it. Okay? And we'll show you some. So uh, they, they know that sound vibration impacts water. And they experiment uh, like that. So these are all the different notes you may not be able to see. But uh, different notes of the piano keyboard. And when different notes are uh, administered to water, then the crystal format, the formation of the water, uh, that when it's crystallized, has different shapes. Mm. Here, an example of water, mm, they administer a certain frequency to the water, and uh, when the water is flowing, it actually changes its shape, mm, just because of the frequency of the water. And then many scientists have been doing different experiments on different words, just like I mentioned Ganga. Different words administered to water. Mm. And they found that, you know, the higher vibration words, like thank you, wisdom, truth, right, love, joy, peace, uh, the crystallization of the water is very uh, beautiful. Whereas more destructive words, you know, anger, violence, evil, they have, uh, that the water shows different, uh, uh, very destructive structure. So just from a scientific perspective, we know that the type of energy you expose yourself to, especially to this body, has a very powerful impact. And therefore, uh, we want to be very careful what we hear. This is an experiment that I did personally with what we call a skill machine. Uh, just to show you a five minute chanting Hare Krishna mantra. Uh, so this was before I chanted. Uh, you can see some uh, bluish shades here, negative energy, and you can see the aura around my body. And then uh, I chanted for five minutes, sound vibration, and the body is 72% water, but it impacts, the sound vibration impacts the whole body. And after that, after five minutes of chanting, you can see uh, all the negative energy is all gone. 
and the aura is even more powerful. You can even see like a shadow uh, that's expanded, so very clear. And here's the same uh, five minutes of chanting. So before my chanting, you can see all my chakras are all over the show and different uh, shapes. And the yogis, uh, they practice Skanga Yoga to align their chakras and you know to open the chakras and get the Kundalini up to go through the chakras. In just five minutes of chanting, look at the difference in terms of the chakras. Uh, they're all aligned and they're all equal in size. And this is simply five minutes of concentrated chanting of the Hare Krishna Mantra. What for what? Half an hour, 45 minutes, a you know, you know, few days, very powerful. And for the yogis to do this takes many, many, many years. Hmm? We went to one program, uh, one devotee had arranged like a multicultural program with uh, different uh, Europeans hmm? and you know, people that are into alternative, uh, they're alternative seekers. And we basically demonstrated Krishna consciousness. Kirtan gave a small talk in Prasad. So after, you know, we, we chanted the Kirtan, then we stopped, and then we were serving Prasad. So one gentleman, he came up uh, to, to receive his Prasad, and uh, he says, uh, you know, what you were chanting is very powerful. So I said, uh, how do you know it? So he says, I can see all your chakras have closed and only the top chakra is open. Now, you know me, I'm not into the chakras, you know, blah, 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 get into all the chakras, things, you know. So when he told me that, I was surprised. Okay, I asked him, so what does that mean? He said, no, we, are, you know, yogis are trying to practice Tango Yoga. It takes years and years to even close uh, the, the lowest chakra. Mm -hmm. So to close the lowest chakra, which is very, you know, which, because it's, that's a, on a central platform, to close that is a mission and very rare. And he says, you people are just chanting and I can see your chakras are closing. That's like far out. Mm -hmm. So obviously he was very psychic. He could see uh, chakras. We can't see, I can't see chakra. I don't know if you can see chakras, but I can see chakras. Uh, the only chakra I get is sometimes I get this one. This only chakra, otherwise no other chakra. Uh, and, uh, but Prabhupada said that if you in Kirtan, uh, then Simply by kirtan, all the benefits of a stanga yoga is achieved. And there's the proof. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just by instruments we can see this. Alright, so that was from a scientific perspective. Mm -hmm. Now uh, I'm going to share with you some of the pastimes to show the power of association. Sadhu sangha, sadhu sangha, sarva shastra karai. Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha Sarva Siddhaya. Association is very important. It acts just like a crystal stone, which will reflect anything which is put before it. Similarly, if we associate with flower like devotees of the Lord, and if our hearts are clear, are crystal clear, then certainly the same action will be there. So, this is why association is wonderful. Now someone may say, you know, I am not pure, so how can I benefit somebody that comes, you know, in association, uh, with my association? So yes, we may not be pure, but the fact that we are here means we have uh, some sentiments to the Supreme Lord. We have uh, some desire to serve the uh, Supreme Lord. Can come, come sir. <clears throat> you can come through. So, uh, in this way, we have some devotion 1%, 2%, 10%, 50%, 80%, 80%, and whatever percent of devotion we have, uh, that uh, can be reflected to other devotees. So, 130 years ago, this is a true story, 130 years ago, Mm -hmm. In the Sri Sampradaya, one of the Sampradayas, mm -hmm. there was a, a group of devotees, and this is in Tamil Nadu. What they would do is every day uh, they would go from village to village 
giving people the opportunity to associate. And uh, what they uh, did was, they would take this deity of Lord Vishnadev, beautiful decorated uh, deity of Lord Vishnadev, with uh, gold ornaments and jewelry. Uh, with uh, beautiful ornaments, jewelry, uh, and they would go deep around sunset, and they would go uh, through the forest to the next village. So in this way, uh, the devotees going kill with kirtan and all the paraphernalia, uh, and they came into a, a forest environment where they were going to do the offerings. And the leader there, uh, Sanyasi, was there, uh, you know, helping with the worship. So they settled down, and it so happened that there were uh, bandits, there were thieves in that gundas in that area. So these thieves, uh, they saw all the jewelry, the ornament, the gold, and all the paraphernalia was offered, so they uh, decided to steal Lord Nishimedev, steal the deity. So they came uh, to the, if they you know, held up the bodies with knights, they held a sannyasi with a knife, and they said, how are we going to steal this deity? And so the sannyasi said, oh, be, be my guest. No problem. If you want to steal the Lord, no problem, because if the Lord wants to go with you, go right to say no. So yes, you can take him, right? But I have one condition. You know, we brought all this paraphernalia, all this food. So let us first, you know, do our offering. Then we can offer, and then after that, you can take, take no problem. We're not going to, we don't object. So they said okay. So then they decide to go take a bath while uh, the devotees uh, brought all the bow offerings, food offerings to the Lord, and they uh, offered uh, the offering to the Lord, and they did arati everything. Uh, the bandits came back, and they said, okay, we're done? They said, okay, yeah. we can take. I said, no, 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 we just offered the food stuff. Uh, first, we should eat. You know, can't waste, you know, let us have a feast, then you can take. So they thought, okay, free feast, no problem. So they all sat and they uh, ate. And while uh, the head uh, thief, while he was eating uh, the foodstuff offered to the Lord, uh, all of a sudden he started to cry. Tears started coming up from his eyes and he started to lament. And he started telling the head priest, I'm such a sinner. Mm -hmm. I tried to uh, do this. Mm -hmm. Please forgive me and his heart completely melted. So uh, this was a true story to show you the power of association. Mm -hmm. By the kirtan, uh, by the foodstuff, uh, even a thief, even a bandit uh, was transformed mm -hmm. against his will. Then uh, another story to show the power of association. And specifically, uh, association, Prophet here is talking about association with devotees. So like for example here, we have come together to associate with like-minded souls. So we want to associate with devotees and not materialists. Mm -hmm. Prophet said, if you associate with a drunkard, you become expert at drinking. Right? So we want to associate with Vaishnavas, with devotees. So one guest he came to a temple and he met a devotee at the temple called Kuresh in South India. And they started discussing. So this guest, he asked Kuresh a question and he said, who is a Vaishnava? Who is a devotee of God? So Kuresh, he said, well, you go to this temple and in this temple, a very long distance away, he told him to go to the temple, you find a, a devotee called Anantacharya. And you ask that question to him. And then uh, you come back. So he decided to walk. Uh, took him many days to journey to the temple. And then he came to the temple. Uh, Ananta Acharya was there with his associates. And they were just about to take lunch. So immediately uh, this guest came. And he says, uh, I have a question. So Ananta Acharya said, no, you can't ask a question now. You come, you sit. 
to take some food stuff. So they fed him nicely. And he says, no, but I have a question. Says, no, no, you can ask tomorrow. <laughs> so he said, okay, you come tomorrow, you can ask. Okay. So then he left. So the next day, uh, this guest came. And as soon as he came uh, to the entrance of uh, the temple, the disciples of Anantadev told this guest, don't enter. You know, you're impure. You're not meant to come in. Uh, if you want to ask a question, you can come tomorrow. So he thought, okay, interesting. Anyway, so then uh, next day, uh, next day when he came, this time it was even further out in the temple environment. It's like a garden area. As soon as he came to the garden area, uh, the disciples said, you know what, you low, low born, you know, you're not fit to be in this temple. Uh, you know, please, if you want to ask a question, you come tomorrow. And this continued for 11 days. 10 days. On the 11th day, he came and uh, he was allowed to come into the temple to ask his question. So he asked Ananta Anantacharya, uh, you know, who is a Vaishnava? And Ananta Acharya gave the answer. He said, a Vaishnava is like uh, a crane, a hen, like salt, and like you. So he was thinking, huh? A Vaishnava is like a crane, a hen, salt, and you. And he didn't get it. And he said, okay, Hare Krishna, and he left. And he walked back uh, to see Guru Kuresh. So when Kuresh saw him, Kuresh said, oh, so did you get your answer? He said, I got an answer, but I don't understand what they said. So he said, okay, what, what happened? So uh, this guest explained the whole situation, how he came, uh, he said for Prasad, and the next day they, you know, criticized him, condemned him, blasphemed him, told him he was very low caste, etc., and they kept him pushing away, and then on 11th day allowed him, he was very confused, uh, and then uh, Ananda Acharya said, uh, a crane, a hen, salt, and you. So he thought, oh, interesting, sit down and I'll tell you. So Kuresh told him the meaning. He said, a devotee is like a crane. Mm -hmm. A crane uh, is in a river and stands very still. And then a small fish will come past in the, in the, through the current of the river, and he won't worry. And then a little bigger fish will come, and he let them pass. And then uh, even more bigger fish will come, and he'll let them pass. And the huge, large fish, they'll see that, oh, the small ones have gone through, the medium ones have gone through, the little large ones have gone through, everything is safe, so they go. And as soon as they go, the crane grabs that fish. So Vaishnava should be like that. So Kuresh said, a devotee of the Lord, and he will, by the law of karma and the nature's arrangement, and he will get happiness and sense gratification coming towards him in a mode of uh, ignorance, uh, lower forms of sense gratification. Mm -hmm. Like Vika, Vika will come pass. Right. Mm -hmm. So, what the crane does for the small fish? Let it pass. So, he's not interested. Then, uh, you get just by nature's arrangement uh, or your past karma, you get a little bigger fish, which is happiness in the mood of passion will come pass. Mm -hmm. Some sensuous DVDs will come pass your way. And what the crane does? Let it go. And then uh, the bigger fish will come, uh, happiness in the mood of goodness. Mm -hmm. That form of happiness will also come. Mm -hmm. And the devotee will let uh, that happiness go. But as soon as uh, devotional service comes, then immediately the devotee will grab it. Just like the crane grabbing the big fish. Mm -hmm. So we should be like the crane to grab the big fish. And the big fish is pure devotional service. Any opportunity to render service to the Lord, uh, the devotee grabs. So that's lesson number one. That's a devotee. Then, uh, the devotee is like a hen. So what does the hen do? 
and it pecks. You'll see it goes around, peck, 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 and picks up. It picks up food from everywhere and leaves everything else. It's expert, even if it goes into a, a sand you know, a heap or a hay stack, it will pick up the grains that it needs and eat that. So, Kura said a devotee is like that. He will, in every, in any situation, no matter what objects there are, and amidst anyone, he will only pick up the good things and leave the rest. So, when he'll only pick up good objects, like the hand, right? He will only take the good out of the people. Even if people have bad qualities, he's not interested in the bad. He's only interested in the good qualities. If somebody does bad, he will see that as a lesson for him not to do that. But he's happy to accept only the good. And the bad, he'll leave it for Krishna to judge and do his thing. But he's interested only in the good. And he'll pick up the good and he's happy. And in circumstances, there'll be good and bad circumstances. So the devotee is happy to take only the good out of every circumstances. So out of every object, out of people, and out of the environment, he's only taking the good. So that's a hand. Then he's like a soul. How is he like salt? Because salt, when you put salt in a preparation, you can see salt is, it's got structure, it's got form, shape. But as soon as you put it in, in, in a preparation, it disintegrates and disappears. And you can't see the salt. So it gives flavor to the, to the preparation, but in the background, it disappears. So that's a devotee. He's ready to render service but in the background, you don't even know who rendered the service. He's not like, Prabhu, it was me, Haribo, it was me, I did that. Right? He's not interested in the glory. He'll do the service and then disappear like salt. Okay? So this is a devotee. And then, Kuria uh, said, when Ananta Dev said, and the devotee is like you, he meant that somebody serious about inquiry, serious about spiritual life. Because, right, you see, you came and they criticized you. They tried to change your way. For 11 days they did that, 10 days they did that, still you were dedicated. Right? You didn't, you know, criticize them or complain, why are you criticizing me? No. You tolerated, you were serious about your inquiry. So devotees like that. Uh, then, uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has also said, that a devotee, whoever chants the holy name of Krishna just once. How many of you, anyone chanted Hare Krishna once? Yes, we all chanted. Right? So, it says whoever chants the holy name of Krishna just once is worshipable and is the topmost human being. When the devotees of Kulina Gram came to see Chit Mahaprabhu, and this is what he told them. That means, right here, I can confidently say that we have uh, the most esteemed assembly in the whole of Indonesia. We have uh, devotees, we have uh, human beings, spirit souls, uh, which the Lord says, who are worshipful and the topmost human beings. Then the Lord says, one who chants regularly is even more advanced. And one who makes others chant, like Srila Prabhupada, they the highest levels. So uh, this association that we are currently having is very powerful. We should not underestimate it. Right, so I'm going to go now to a few other pastimes and just to show you the power of association. Sri Chit Mahaprabhu was traveling uh, through South India, came to Mathura, and with his devotees, they were having kirtan. And they were extending kirtan, and in the kirtan was one devotee, and he 
Jesus was flowing from his eyes. He was experiencing all ecstatic symptoms. And when Chichen Mahaprabhu saw that, Chichen Mahaprabhu asked him, uh, you know, after the cure time, have you by any chance met Mother Vendrapuri? And the devotee said, yes. In fact, Mother Vendrapuri was traveling and he came to Mathura and during the rainy season, uh, he stayed with me and I served him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he blessed me, he gave me his remnants, he initiated me, and because of uh, him, I'm a devotee. And Chichen Mahaprabhu said, yes, I can see that you've met Mother Vendrapuri uh, because of the symptoms that you exhibit. Just by the loving symptoms, uh, devotional sentiments, I could understand that these symptoms are not ordinary. It's because you have met an extraordinary pure devotee of the Lord. Now, Sri Chet Mahaprabhu, he was traveling, and as he was traveling through south to India, he would meet all different types of people, and he would speak to them. So one time he met a group of Buddhists, and they started discussing. So the Buddhist uh, the leader, he was, very, he was very proud. So he started to uh, preach to Chet Mahaprabhu of the nine, uh, nine you know, principles of Buddhism. And Sri Chet Mahaprabhu uh, listened to him, and then Sri Chet Mahaprabhu defeated him, completely smashed his philosophy. And you know, people would generally gather. So after he got smashed, uh, the people, you know, uh, were happy that Sri Chet Mahaprabhu smashed the Buddhists, and the Buddhists became very upset that these Vaishnavas defeated their philosophy. So the next day, they decided to, uh, they planned to, uh, to do something nasty towards Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So what they decided was they're going to get a tray, a plate, and put all abominable foodstuffs on the plate, and offer that to Mahaprabhu like it's Mahaprasad. So the next day, they came to Shijan Mahaprabhu, and uh, they told Mahaprabhu, uh, oh Mahaprabhu, Lord Chaitanya, this is Mahaprasad. Please accept. Uh, immediately, as soon as they did that, a huge eagle, you can see the eagle is there, a huge eagle came, lift, lifted the plate, and as it flew, all the foodstuff fell from the Buddhas. And the eagle let go that, that, let go that huge plate, and the plate hit the leader on his head. You can see it right there. Uh, he hit him on the head, uh, cut his head, and he fell unconscious. When that happened, the disciples of the Buddhas, they could understand that Lord Chaitanya is no ordinary person. So immediately they fell, to Lord, they fell at the feet of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and they uh, begged uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, please uh, revive our spiritual master. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, he told the Buddhas, the disciples, you go and chant the Hare Krishna mantra in the ear of the of your spiritual master and you'll wake up. So they immediately went and they chanted the Hare Krishna, they had kirtan in the ears of the spiritual master, and immediately the spiritual master awoke, the Buddhist leader awoke. When he awoke, he started to chant automatically with pure love of Krishna. Mm -hmm. And then they all surrendered to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So, just by the association of Chit Mahaprabhu and the Holy Name, uh, even the Buddhists who are completely against the Supreme Lord, uh, by the association of the Lord, they were able to get mercy. This beautiful dog, Shivananda Sen, who's offering obeisances, he uh, would take the devotees on Parikram and uh, from uh, from Bengal, from uh, Navadvip to uh, Jagannath Puri, from Bengal to Jagannath Puri. And he would make arrangements uh, for all the uh, preparations, all the combinations that are to be the So he would make all preparations for the devotees. So one time, uh, and you know, all the accommodation, the food preparations, everything. So one time they were going on the Parikram. Uh, pilgrimage and this dog joined them. So Shiva and Sen was very happy that this dog joined them and he would make all arrangements for the dog's journey. They came to a boat and to cross the river and the boatman said no 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 dogs allowed. And Shiva and said no 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 I'm happy to pay you even more but the dog must go. So in this way the dog would travel with them. One day Shiva and Sen 
uh, he had to go visit a tax man, tax collector. And he told his servant to make sure they feed the dog. So that day he was out for the whole day. In the evening he came and he asked the servant, did you feed the dog? And the servant said, oh, I forgot. So they looked for the dog and couldn't find the dog. And Shivananda fasted the whole night, he didn't eat. The next morning, they tried to search for the dog and they couldn't find the dog. And Shivananda Sen was very unhappy that they couldn't find the dog. Anyway, they came to Jagannath Puri and they came to see the Lord. So after the Lord had received them, the next day when they came to see the Lord, uh, Shivananda came into the assembly and he saw Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, and he saw the dog. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was eating coconut pulp and throwing it to the dog. Uh, we can see here, and the dog was eating. And then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was telling the dog, chant Hari, chant Krishna, and the dog was chanting Krishna and Hari. And when Shivananda saw, Shivananda Sen saw this, his heart melted in ecstasy. That that's the dog. Because he was concerned about the dog. And he was so happy that the dog got the blessings of uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm -hmm. The next, and then uh, Shivananda Sen also felt very bad. So he fell down at the feet of the paws of the dog and begged forgiveness. Please forgive me that I could not look after you nicely on the park. And Srila Prabhupada gives a beautiful purpose. The example of a dog is very significant in this connection. A dog naturally does not become a devotee at any time. But still, it is sometimes found that a dog of a devotee gradually becomes a devotee also. We have actually seen that a dog has no respect even for Tulsi plant. Indeed, a dog is especially inclined to pass urine on Tulsi plant. Therefore, the dog is number one non devotee. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan movement is so strong that even a dog like non devotee can gradually become a devotee by the association of a devotee of Lord Chaitanya. Srila Shivananda Sen, a great householder devotee of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, attracted a dog on the street while going to Jagannath Puri. The dog began to fall in and ultimately went to see Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and was liberated. The next day they couldn't find the dog. And then they heard that actually the next day a spiritual aeroplane came and took the dog back to the spiritual world. Similarly, cats and dogs in the household of Srivas Thakur were also liberated. Cats and dogs and other animals are not expected to become devotees. But in association of pure devotees, they are also liberated. This is the result of Sadhu Sangha. Consequently, association with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the promotion back home, back to Godhead. This result is possible even for a dog by the mercy of Vaishnava. Therefore, everyone in the human form of life should be induced to associate with devotees. By rendering a little service, even by eating prasad, what to speak of chanting and dancing, everyone can be promoted to Vaikuntha Loka. It is therefore requested that all our devotees in ISKCON community become pure Vaishnavas. So that by their mercy, all the people of the world will be transferred to Vaikuntha, even without their knowledge. So this is Prabhupada's uh, expectation of us. He wants us to become pure devotees so that just by our association, people can go back even unknowingly. Everyone should be given a chance to take prasad and thus be induced to chant the holy name, Hare Krishna, and also dance in ecstasy. By these three processes, Although performed without knowledge or education, even an animal went back to Godhead. All right, so we'll conclude uh, with this uh, pastime mm, to show how uh, Srila Prabhupada Association also, mm, like here we are here, uh, we're getting the Deities Association, uh, we're getting Srila Prabhupada's Association, and we get everybody else's Association. So Srila Prabhupada one time was flying in a plane and uh, it was lunchtime. So the servant who was sitting next to him, uh, he took out a lunchbox. And in the lunchbox uh, was uh, puff rice. So the uh, air hostess, she was going past and she noticed Prabhupada's box was open and she noticed this puff rice. So it's the first time she saw this. So she stood there looking at Prabhupada, looking at the uh, box. 
and she was a little amazed. Uh, Prabhupada took a spoon of puff rice, um, made it into a ball, and popped it into his mouth. And she thought, oh, that's interesting way to eat this strange thing. Uh, Prabhupada took another uh, a spoon of puff rice, made it in a ball, and popped it into his mouth. She was impressed. Prabhupada took the third time, made it in a ball, and popped it into his mouth. So then she looked at Prabhupada and says, can I try? Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada said, sure. So she took the box, mm -hmm. she took, some, took a spoon of puff rice, put it into her hand, tried to make a ball and threw it at it. That <laughs> went, went all over the shore. Mm -hmm. So she thought, no, this is not working. Right? So then she took the spoon and the, bowl, and the box and she started eating the puff rice right in front of Prabhupada. And the servant is sitting there thinking, no, no, can't do that. You know, that's my, you know, it's, that's my spiritual mass puff rice. And you know, it's like, that's his lunch. And you know, it's like, you know, how can the air do that? She ate the puff rice. Right? She said, well, that's very nice, very tasty. Mm -hmm. So then uh, she goes off. Prabhupada was very happy. And the servant was very unhappy. Uh, so the servant says, you know, Prabhupada, how could you let her you know, eat your uh, puff rice? Mm -hmm. So then Prabhupada said, see, uh, the living entities in this material world uh, are, are going from one body to another, from one species to another, uh, from one planet to another, from one universe to another, millions and millions and millions of times. And uh, they, it's, a, it's a rare opportunity for them to connect with Krishna, even through Prasad. And this soul has now connected with Krishna to Prasad. Hmm. So when Prabhupada told the servant this, the servant could understand Prabhupada's mood. Hmm. In this uh, relation, this connection, there's another pastime. Uh, in Dwarka, Lord Krishna was with Queen Rukmi, and Krishna was smiling. And Queen Rukmini, she says, my lord, why are you smiling? Hmm. And Krishna pointed uh, to an end mm, that was there, mm, uh, that was trying to find some sugar. So Krishna said, see that end? That end has been Indra, the king of heavens, for 27 lifetimes. And still is looking for pleasure. Mm. So this was the point where I was making that the living entity gets caught up in the cycle of birth and death for lifetimes and lifetimes. And by some good fortune, by a good association, even with Krishna Prasad, one gets connected. And it so happened that after three years later, Prabhupada came to the same city and Prabhupada came to the temple and was giving a talk. And this whole air hostess happened to come on that day to the temple and hear Shiva Prabhupada. And then Prabhupada told the servant, just see, if it wasn't for that power, we would have lost the soul. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, the power of association. Mm -hmm. And in conclusion, I would like to share. All right, we'll just conclude with two more verses. And this is another beautiful verse. My dear Narada, Actually, I do not reside in my abode. Here the Lord is speaking. I do not reside in my abode, by Kunta, the kingdom of God. Nor do I reside within the hearts of the yogis. But I reside in that place. I reside in that place where my pure devotees chant my holy name and discuss my form, pastimes, and qualities. So that's where Krishna So when we come together like this, Krishna is here. He's not in Vaikuntha, he's not in the heart of the yogis, mm -hmm. but uh, he's actually here. And Srila Prabhupada did not just give us a theoretical process, he gave us the temples where we can practice it. He gave us devotees with whom we can practice. He gave us the deities with, uh, for whom we can practice. And he gave us the books by which we can practice. And most importantly, he gave us himself as an example. And then I'll conclude with this beautiful statement on the glories of congregational chanting. So now we're going to uh, 
we're going to congregate in con we're going to uh, congregationally chant huh, for the Supreme Lord the Hare Krishna Mantra and it says a person who throwing away all shyness so you don't need to worry who's watching your clap who's watching you raise your hands who's watching your dance don't worry huh? why? Huh? because throwing away all shyness glorify me Krishna says, by singing, dancing, or studying, goes to my abode with 10 million of his relatives. This is the power of association and congregation, con congregating to chant the holy names of the Lord. Uh, Srila Prabhupada told Vrinda Vineshwari, Mother Vrinda Vrinda Vineshwari, Prabhupada said there are three ways to transcend the body by chanting, by dancing, and by playing musical instruments. So someone may be thinking, I'm just playing a musical instrument, but actually just that playing is no longer really playing. You are transcending this gross body and realizing your constitutional position. Mm -hmm. Chanting and dancing, people love to chant and dance. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to have a party, mm -hmm. especially during lockdown. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when we congregate, uh, here we are glorifying the Lord and Sri Chet Mahaprabhu, uh, they, are, uh, they have come to this world to give the process of chanting and dancing. Mm -hmm. So, they are the, uh, the, the supreme lords uh, who are uh, the most expert in chanting and dancing. And that's the process they came to give. And we glorify them with that same process, we offer chanting and dancing uh, in return to them. So let us take full advantage uh, of the association. Naturally, we don't know what the future holds, just like we don't know what next week Sunday is going to happen, right? Next week Sunday, the president may say, uh, level four for lockdown. Mm -hmm. So because we don't know what's going to happen next week Sunday, uh, what you have to do today Yes, make the most of it. Right? Take full advantage. Mm -hmm. And the process is very, very simple. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada says chanting, dancing. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, in this beautiful song, Paramakaruna Parito Hijana Nita Kora Chandra, Prabhupada says, Logic Mahasavatara Sasi Romani Kevala Ananda Kanta. Shija Mahaprabhu has come to give. Kevala Analakanda, the most, most beautiful process of self-realization, of perfecting one's life, simply by chanting and dancing. So in the purport, Prabhupada says, our process, Krishna consciousness, is basically uh, chanting, and what we chant, uh, this is the song we chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. That's our, our uh, song, and that song has been chanted uh, for millions and millions and millions of years and lifetimes. It's an eternal song. So we chant that song, and then dancing. And you'll see, uh, Sri Chet Mahavish, uh, as the Lord that came to show us, he's dancing with his hands, rings like that. It's a sign of surrender, right? I give up, my Lord. Enough of my nonsense, please accept me. Like when a child runs, then the mother picks up the child. So the child runs like this, so the mother can pick up. So Krishna and is happy to pick us up. So Prabhupada says, chanting, dancing, and when you're tired, right, you take some prasad and rest. That's it. So that's the process of Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then little philosophies that you understand, but otherwise it's chanting, dancing, feasting, and some rest. And you can get up again, chanting, dancing, feasting, rest. Chanting, dancing, feasting, rest. Mm -hmm. That's spiritual life. So we'll stop there. Thank you very much for uh, your association. Uh, please uh, do not underestimate uh, the collective power and energy that uh, we have collectively and that we can serve each other. Mm -hmm. And as Lord Chet Mahavu says, mm -hmm. Uh, anyone who chants Hare Krishna even once is the best among human beings and they worship God. Mm -hmm. 
what to do about somebody who is regularly uh, trying to chant the holy names of Krishna, uh, the most glorious. And uh, those who are really serious, uh, they're extremely advanced. And so we are happy to have your association. Srila uh, Prabhupada, uh, are there any questions or comments before we commence? is that person who worships Vishnu. And Vishnu is a name for the Supreme Lord. So anyone who accepts the Supreme Lord, that there is one Supreme Lord, known by different names. We call him Krishna, others call him Jehovah, others call him Allah. He's one God. That person is called, that person who accepts that one Supreme Lord and accepts that we are all his servants, that person is a Vaishnava. And so even somebody who accepts, uh, they may not accept Krishna as the personality of God, but they accept uh, in their own tradition that there is somebody who they accept as Supreme Lord, they also accept it as uh, Vaishnavas, mm -hmm. as devotees of the Lord. So what makes them special is because they have realized their original identity. Others who think I am God, soon they will realize they made a big mistake. Those who, will, who accept that God is impersonal, doesn't have a form, they will find that they are lacking, they will never be happy. So those who accept God is a person, and we are all conscious personal person, uh, personalities that have a personal relationship with God, they are actually Vaishnavas. And that, that is special because you are actually understanding your original true identity as an eternal servant of God, and others not. Like you see, there's, Sh there's Shaivites, there's Kanapatyas, uh, there's Shaktas, different traditions and groups. So uh, the Kanapatyas, they accept Ganesh is the Supreme. Okay? And Ganesh, according to scripture, is not the Supreme. Mm -hmm. uh, those who accept Lord Shiva, uh, Lord Shiva is in a very unique category, but it's explained by Shinavayatha Shambhu, is the greatest devotee. Mm -hmm. Surya, uh, the sun, many people accept the sun as the supreme. But the sun is also an energy of God. Right? So that person who accepts God as the supreme person, no one equal and no one above, that person is called a is that okay? Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Alright, so uh, the, the guests that are here for the first time, please raise your hands. Alright, you can come forward and take your gift. So this is uh, the, the movie that I was speaking about. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a computer, Get a friend and watch it with you. For the first time as well? All right, we're going to, after the kill time, so we get one more, right? Any others here for the first time? You have to be your first time, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, what's your good name? What's your good name? Oh, Papana. Are you are you on the Babatam class? Oh, nice meeting you. So, uh, so Papana Prabhu is uh, a student from we have Babatam class every week and uh, he's a regular attendance on the Babatam class. I have never seen him. I think we've been doing the Babatam class now for a few months and uh, this is the first time uh, that's what I said. Uh, you know, it's a blessing now, so we have to do every association. Thank you for the book. All right, we'll stop there. Shila Prabhupada Ki
and under pressure on the main. That's what we're going to do. We're going to be the crane that will come here and catch the big fish, the big fish of devotional service. You can only get it by the mercy of Shila Prabhupada. So come here and get that, that mercy. Uh, be the, the hen that will pack at the nectar and the Mahaprasha that we will be honoring and uh, be the salt that will, um, you know, salt adds flavor to everything. So if you don't have salt, your food is bland. So be the salt that has that form and then that dissolves away, but take that nectar with you. And this association, this Sangha can only happen with all of you. So please stay safe, always keep masked up, um, you know, do all the things that you need to do be, to be safe, uh, take all your vitamins, so we can protect all our devotees here and everybody, and we can get rid of this COVID very quickly and we can just, you know, vibrate the holy name in our bodies and mind and dance, chant and be happy. So thank you so much for everybody for coming. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you, all the guests. And please come and share. Uh, I just want to also say that next week uh, we will have the Association of His Holiness, uh, Ram Govinda Swami Maharaj. We will start picking off all the mercy with all the gurus coming. And then the following week we will have His Holiness, Pastor Tidasko Swami Maharaj, who will start off Karti um, with a bang. So we are so fortunate to have all of the association come be safe and uh, grab the mercy. And uh, today's Sunday Love Feast was sponsored by Sandy Mataji in, order, in honor of her mom, uh, Ananga Manjari Mataji's birth anniversary. She's a very, very special disciple of Pakistan um, She's not no longer with us. So in honor of her, we uh, will honor today's feast. And also, um, Gangesh Prabhu sent a message to say that there's a lot of uh, new items that have come in at the gift shop from India. So go and grab some books, share the books and after Prabhupada's books. And you know, you can also do your shopping, which you haven't done for a very, very, very long time. Uh, thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Saturday is a Kadishi.